Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> amen, amen. Good to see family again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. COVID-19 had no hold on us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you all, family of Yah. Let us greet one another. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to the King.
Father, we lift your name on high. We worship, O Sovereign King. We bless your name, O Yahweh. We bless your name, O Yahweh. We bless your name, O Yahweh. We bless your name. Sovereign King, we're not defeated. No, 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 no. We're not defeated. No, 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 no. We're not defeated, Judah. Judah. We're not defeated. So.
your kingdom come. No matter what I do in the life, you're there, there. Morning, noon, or day, or night, you're there, there. No matter what I do in the life, you're there, there. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I'm at Yalo, your Elohim, which brought you Elohim and Israim, and now the house of slavery. You had no other might to win against my face. You did not make for yourself a carved image, or any likes of that, which you hand above, or which in the earth beneath, or which is in the water under the earth. You don't bow down to them nor serve them, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim, my jealous El, vision and quickness of the fathers, from the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me but showing them commitment to the th thousands of those who let me guard my commands. You, you didn't make the name of Yahweh who brings not, for Yahweh does not even hundreds who brings the names not. Remember the Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you, you labor should do all your work, but seven days is Sabbath of Yahweh him. You didn't want to do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor a stranger within your gates. For six days, you have the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, 
at Resin 70, Dofer Yapas 70, Sarah Park. Respect your father and your mother so you dare upon one from the soil which Elohim has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not covet your neighbor's house, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. Thank you. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Am I on? Well, I guess they don't remove the official title of cult leader from me, huh? <laughs> Ain't nobody been hollering that lately. There's somebody called me an internet gangster. What's his name? Yasarala Hula Hala Hala Hala. He said he's going to disarm me too. I told him I'd give him all the opportunity in the world too. I mean, I ain't the baddest guy in the world, but I ain't the punkest guy in the world either. I think it's a culture shock when you come from Christianity and the wavelength that they program in your mind when you come over here and you get liberated. <clears throat> Liber religiously re liberated. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? So now we can really truly understand what it means that he who the Son set free is free indeed. Yeah. You're right. Y'all is good, most high, but y'all, you alone are worthy. All praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for watching over us, keeping us, providing for us, both naturally and spiritually. You're true to your word, true to your commandments, true to yourself. If you didn't swear by anything but yourself, I don't know where we would be. So thank you for wisdom, foresight, knowledge, understanding. Let the spirit of truth reign in our ears today to continue to keep giving us direction as we go forth here. We welcome you, Ruach, into this place to minister and speak to your people. We bless you for the sacrifice, Yahshua, the blood that was shed for each and every last one of us. May, they, may we can show respect and honor to what you've done. We thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Speak to us your words of truth and grant me utterance. In the magnificent name of Jesus, hallelujah, you may be seated. You know, the world don't take too kindly the people who liberate the minds and give voices to the poor people because there's more of us than them. And when you're rocked asleep, their world continues to keep advancing. That's why they always try to send forces out against people who they consider to be revolutionaries. If this was a world where everybody's minding their own business, uh, we would all be in a good place then, wouldn't we? But we know that the thief as those that are submitted to him at his will. And we know that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Now, when you're in agreement with the thief, that makes you a thief. Is that right? When you are in agreement with the thief, that makes you a murderer. Is that right? When you agree with the thief, that makes you a destroyer. Is that true? And like I said, I believe that this little thing that we just got finished dealing with is nothing more than a trial run. And if anything, what people should have learned from this is, is how much that we as a family that has come out from among them need each other even more so. I've been wore out during this time, not because of physical labor, but because of 
speaking on the phone for so many hours. You know, when everybody's off from work, I guess all they got to do is call up Pastor Dow, you know. After they get past the elders and Well, at least I don't have too many people want to shoot the breeze with me no more. Shoot the breeze. Who got time for shooting the breeze? It's definitely done made people a hell of a lot more sober. Hmm? And you see the reason why I tell you over and over again, I don't have a lick of confidence in these people in the world. You see the way these people act? Act like a bunch of maniacs. Hmm? And I guess the powers that be figured it was time for a trial run because, I mean, after all, think about this. You able to lock down and shut down the whole entire world? I think the only one that didn't participate was, well, there's a few of them. I'm sure them lost or them tribes in the Amazon didn't know nothing about it. So it just passed right by them. I just, you know. You don't know, you don't know, do you? And then um, the people in Switzerland, they didn't practice social distancing that I know of. Now we have to get our family over in Sweden to confirm that. See, we have straightway in, in almost every nation in the world. So whatever they tell you in any parts of the world, all I got to do is just get in contact with the people. Tell me what's really going on over there. Isn't that nice? And um, now it looks like that people want to start truly taking us serious now. Should have been doing it all along. The reality of it is, is the most high don't give you the ears to hear, then you ain't none of his. Is that right? Now we got Again, another, we have a pandemic going on in this country. Black men dying on the streets of people who want to be police and then the police themselves. And I'm going to talk to Brother Gideon. We're going to teach all y'all men uh, how to conduct and carry yourself. And if, if anybody, I don't care if they're in a damn uniform or not, they draw a gun on you and you beat them to the punch, you take their ass out. Because you only got one life. And that's still a human being in that uniform. If he draws a gun on you and you ain't doing shit, ain't got no damn sense. And I'll tell you what's getting ready to take place in this country. A lot of people getting ready to start dying because folks ain't got sense. They literally, ain't going, they don't have any sense. And we're going to teach you how to be intelligent and how to do things too. So that nobody can trace stuff back to you. Y'all need to know this. And I looked at that video this morning of that guy jogging. And um, who's been to the weapons disarmament class that we taught some years ago. Raise your hand. You were there, Elder Donnie? Wasn't you there? Um, and it's a hell of a lot more easy to disarm someone with a shotgun than it is with a pistol. We had a guy that came up from Florida during that class. He comes over and he starts saying, ah, this ain't nothing but a bunch of play stuff, didn't he, Elder Donnie? Did you do it, Elder Donnie? He said, this ain't real, this stuff. Y'all, you know, because when you're, you have to slow things down when you're teaching people. Because once you go live, things speed up. But there's an old motto out there, slow is fast. That means once you learn how to do it, slow the first time, and then you can speed it up, and you get fast, it becomes second nature. And so this guy, he was mocking one of the elder Donnie. Hmm? 
I sent them skydiving though, didn't I? Let them know how uh, serious it is. Um, and to let him know how serious it really is, I put him down pretty damn hard. Did I put him down pretty hard, Elder Nani? Hmm? I put him down, I planted him hard. That's the only way you're going to get it. And it wasn't funny no more to him after that, was it? And he ain't been back since. And I think that what it is is because of the advent of social media, you have so many people out there running their mouths. You know, everybody is this inflated being. You understand what I mean? I mean, now we have another viable instructor in there, um, the brother that's the seal. And it's good because we can take all these things that we've learned and done, teach them to you. So that you can know. Because the last thing I want to hear is one of y'all unjustly getting shot. Because somebody out there in a uniform had a make your day moment. I'm going to tell you flat out what my personal philosophy is. A law enforcement officer draw a gun on me and I see him drawing and I beat him to the punch. One of us or both of us going to die that day. Because you have to get this through your thick head. You got one life. You don't get no do-overs. And the last thing you need is to go off in eternity because somebody got a case of the ass and can't do their job, which they are your public servants. And using all this unjust, deadly force. And see, most people don't like talk like this because most people, they can think it, but they're afraid to say it. If you understand what I mean. Well, we're going to test the limits of freedom of speech. If you understand what I mean. And I've trained my shires that if we're ever in a car, and y'all remember, what was that guy that got shot up there at Minnesota and while the baby is in the back crying? What's his name? Philando Castile. His girlfriend up there hollering and screaming. She don't. No, I got a, my, my team got a game plan for that. And I'll teach y'all. Uh, and a lot of these things, when we teaching y'all some of this stuff, we're going to build a big ass Faraday box so we can put y'all cell phones and all these other tracking devices and everything else out of the way because they don't need to know. Because they watch and listen to everything. And most of you, you, you can't live without the damn phone. You don't want to try to come and record what we're saying. We got to pat you down. Before we can give you knowledge. But this, this one reason why a lot of people don't come to this stuff because it ain't no fun. Most grown men ain't used to being hollered at, screamed at. Because of immaturity, we take it personally. But when you're training, it has nothing to do with personal issues there. It has to do with getting you from a particular mindset to a functionable mindset. That make sense? And I'm also telling you brothers how y'all need to start riding around in your vehicles. All right, but if I start telling y'all all this stuff, I don't want no damn phones on you. No recording devices. You can't, you can't abide by that, then don't even listen to it. Don't even, I won't even do it. But it does no good for myself, Brother Gideon, and the... Um, Frogman to know all this and not give it out to you. You can see every time somebody come in, they're willing to teach you. Willing to teach you. Except you get the crash course. You don't have to go through all this extensive training to see if you qualify to get there. Now make it sense. 
Almost every school you go to, everybody, they volunteer for the schools, the special skill schools, right? And every one of them believe that they're going to get through it. And so the military figured out that we got a test. We'll test you out for a week or, or a few days to see if you really want to be here. Has nothing to do with the course. And you know what they do? Make it run and run and run. And they get in your face and call you all kind of names. Hmm? Make it roll around on the ground. Low crawl with your head in mud and dirt. And you dare not better wipe it. You do so many push-ups and flutter kicks and set-ups and then when you think it's over with, you run some more. Spray fire hydrants on you. And right when they think they got you at the point where you're getting ready to, you think it's over you and, 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 um, and, and, and you think we're getting ready to change, you know, like this has got to be it. This is the end of the day right here. And when I say run, I ain't talking about run like from here to in the tabernacle. I'm talking about run eight, ten miles. You said you wanted to be here. Say how bad you want to be here. Hmm? Like in aerosol school, they made you run with a weapon. You know, people though, yesterday say you can't run with a weapon, you know. How do you run with a weapon? I know how you run. You, you run just like this. Seems easy like you're doing. Try that for about 10 miles. Hmm? And the whole purpose is, is to get to that inner man. See, if your mind can convince your body to quit and your body agrees with your mind, then you don't need to be there. Because your mind will talk to you. Why do you think that we as Israelites were slow moving to holiness? Because we don't want to go through the inconvenience of being tested. We'd rather go ahead and give ourselves a passing grade. Why do you think you always like having somebody else to do everything while you sit back and watch or come up with an excuse and sham and ghost and hide and hmm? they got a little thing called a bell. Bing, 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 bing. In jump school down there was a, a little house, a white house at the top. And they would ask kindly and politely, does anybody want to quit? Sneakers, potato chips, Coke, air conditioning, it's all up in that building. And you wouldn't believe how many people would fall out. And if you said anything, oh man, shut up. Eddie's, shut up. Bah, 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 bah. And they would help escort them on up there in the most kindest way you ever saw. And then the ones that stayed, guess what you got? You get to repeat the whole process all over again. What do you think Satan's trying to do? Make it quit. Some of you, he already got you halfway there. And you know how you do that? Continue to keep submitting the same thoughts to your mind. Because your challenge ain't my challenge. He hits you where you weak at. You know where you weak at. Keep hearing the same thing over and over again. Hmm? Didn't Paul say run his race? 
And when you run it, you're supposed to run this as one that is going to obtain the prize. Yeah. Wonder how many people are going to give up. What are you going to do when they tell you you got to get forced vaccinated? Hmm? See the people? I, I actually kind of got a little happy. We need to go up there and import some of that DNA from Michigan. They stormed the Capitol. Anybody know what the difference between a lawful order and an unlawful order? Anybody? What is a lawful order, Brother Rich? In the Constitution. What is an unlawful order? You could be in the military. And I could be a private. And if a sergeant first class, been in there 18 years, has great seniority, if he gives me an unlawful order, I can refuse that. Will it be a great inconvenience? I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. But isn't that how power always do anyway? They always test you. Even if they're ignorant, to see what your limitation is going to be. I got tested on my faith. I told them, I'm not doing no more. I'm not doing no more staff duty. Not on the Sabbath. I'll do it six other days, but not this one. Who do you think you are? I don't think anything. I know what I am. No I am. I had a first sergeant jump up behind his desk, jump up behind his desk, desk screaming and hollering, start to walk around. And I said, uh, we're going to keep this professional, I know, right? Y'all hear what I'm saying, right? Because you come over here and get in my face, in my space, your E8 stripes, your eight stripes ain't going to protect you. Who the hell you think you all talking to me? I, like, I, hey, I'm giving you the ultimatum here. I'm just telling you what I ain't. I, well, we'll, we'll take the ring from me. Take it all the way down to nothing, as far as I'm concerned. It was better for me to obey y'all rather than man. You know, what makes you think that any time you're going to be tested in the faith that people are just going to roll over? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that when you start standing on this word that it was going to be a bed of ease? They called a chaplain in. Now I'm standing on a battalion commander's carpet. And we're way up there now. There are a lot of people in the room. And me standing front and center. They bought the chaplain for verification. He verified too. Verified I was 100% right. And after being there all the while, uh, the company commander said, he ain't pulling no more staff duty. He could have said opposite. It wouldn't make no difference to me. I still wasn't going to do it. It don't make any sense. I had already read in the book, we ought to obey y'all rather than man. They said, you signed a contract. I said, well, it's revoked now. I did that in ignorance. Now I'm informed. I know how to remain respectful. You understand what I mean? But just because I'm remaining respectful, that don't mean that you're going to sit up here and disrespect not concerning this. I ain't in boot camp no more. 
Does that make sense? And y'all know the rest of the story. Still got out in E6. And I didn't pull no more staff duty either. Because I knew my time was up. I was D-O-N-E, done. Hmm? So we're living in a world, a bad world. Like I said on the broadcast, there's a presumption up here in this area. And that goes for all of us. I don't care what color your skin is. You're associated with us. They don't care nothing about you. And don't you ever think for one minute that even though they smile and they're kind, don't you think that they care one bit about you keep your keenness and your wits about yourself. When you're dealing with these people outside of our family, of Israel, don't you ever let your guard down around these people. Does that make sense? It's a sad, sad thing. Georgia's justice system, the whole damn thing needs to be revamping. Now, I'm going to tell you, y'all, you know the reason why black people get shot and killed and white cops go free and black cops go free? Y'all know the reason why? Anybody want to know? It's because, believe it or not, black people, you ain't no citizen here in the United States of America. You ain't never been considered a citizen. Pass out what you're talking about. See, that's the reason why knowledge is power. Because then you know how to handle yourself. This is the same country that all of a sudden, you know, y'all remember years ago, believe it or not, black people could vote before a white woman could. Think about that. So all we're doing now is watching history repeat itself again. They're not using dogs and fire hoses, they're just flat out shooting. You follow me? And the way I read the Constitution of the United States of America, you have a right to defend yourself against all enemies, foreign, somebody say that last part, and what does that mean? Right here on your own land and soil. And that doesn't mean that you go out and antagonize the beast. Every time you leave out your house, you get back home, that's a win. Hallelujah. Try to win. I saw this one idiot speeding down the highway. Why would you want to do something like that? I mean, if you're speeding, you get pulled over. Don't sit up there and trade words. Why you want to trade words? You don't know if that's a Ku Klux Klan in that thing. And you know the system going to let them off. How in the hell does two people kill a man jogging and they don't go to jail just 74 days later? Explain that to me. That's like up here. I got to go to court next week. I chased these four guys on these little ATV things, right? There were four of them up there. I met them up there in the middle of that road, and I said, I said, y'all got a problem. I said, I'm, I, we can remedy it real fast. All four of y'all bring your ass out here on this road. And by that time, Scott, Brent, and, and Victor, they weren't even there. Boy, they got smart mouth, and yeah, 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 caught. I was, woo-wee. I said, boy, y'all got a mouth, but can that mouth, can y'all back it up with your ass? Oh, you supposed to be a preacher. I said, look at the devil. I said, look at the devil. I said, y'all got me mistaken. I ain't no Christian. That's your big mistake. I said, I even tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. I said, let me tell you something. Don't come down and mess with folks who know what they're doing. Oh, you don't know shit, you black motherfucker. I said, oh, really? Got in my truck, took off, came down here and called the sheriff's department. I said, you got one, no, two choices. No, you got one choice. 
You can get out here and take care of these people, I'm going to take care of myself. Before I even got my shoes on, got back up the hill, they, they were already there. I said, that's a first. <laughs> By that time, Scott and Brent when them was, was up there in Victor, and I was upset, wasn't I? But did I not maintain self-control? He did. So you have to know yourself. You can be angry, but what? So you can be angry and still keep your cool. Now, did I ask for this? I didn't ask for that. Come to find out that as soon as he got off that pavement, went around and screeched out, that was vandalism. They say, you want, you want to press charges? Say, yeah, I asked Brother Brent, what do you think I should do? Brother Brent said, press charges. <laughs> I, even when that little deputy sheriff was sitting right there, I said, get your ass off that damn vehicle and see what happens if you come out in this road. I didn't give a shit he was standing right there. Am I telling the truth? Did I ask for that? Mind my own business. So the sergeant came, said, yeah, I don't press charges. Yep, sure do. You want me to take him to jail? Now? Take him to jail. Call the DA. Well, <clears throat> COVID-19. I said, damn, you commit a crime and don't even have to worry about going to jail today. But me. If I commit a crime, they're going to put me in the cell with the COVID-19. <clears throat> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. That's just a fact. Racism ain't dead. That's a spirit behind that stuff. It is. And racism don't discriminate. We know white people discriminate against black people, but black people even discriminate against black people. If I can use that term, be pure, I mean melanated, but you know what I'm saying. It's all the uh, the, same dep the same sheriff came down the other day and uh, me and him just sat out there and talked for a while, shot the breeze. That's when I shot the breeze. And I said, by the way, whatever, what's going on with that cat? Well, he just wants to pay the fines and stuff. And he said, yeah, you can do that. But he, he said, but you, you still got to go to court. I just wanted to be passing. And so uh, me and my size, we were going over in the, to the next county because they couldn't no longer ride them ATVs on the road no more. They had to get them towed because they wasn't properly licensed and tagged. So I raised down the window. I said, hey, how y'all doing? I talked just like that too, didn't I? I said, see you in court. And you ought to see, you ought to see that, you know that, that, that sour look? You know, you look like you're about to, you know that nauseated look when you look like you're about to throw up. And your mind tells you, I done messed up. That's what I'm doing, I'm using the law for the lawless. I hadn't decided how I'm going to act when I get to court. No, everything is, is acting. No, I haven't determined how offended I want to be. <laughs> no crying. If I see them run in, they may want to jump me because I'm going to get to their ass. I already had Elder Rufus, Brother Daniel Muir, and all of them volunteered. Yeah, we won't be there that day. I said, wouldn't that be nice, man? I bring all these big old black, tall, six-foot guys in the, in the courtroom up there, man. Because we could fill that thing up. You could put six bubbles in there, nothing would happen. You bring six black folks dressed in black, 
They'll bring the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the county sheriff, the police department, and the next county sheriff and their police department over. State troopers will be on hand. <laughs> That's the type of world we live in. I had somebody, because I made that last video, you know, it's amazing how everybody always accuses me of being a racist. People love speaking presumptuously, don't they? Hmm? The only thing I do is tell them, here's my website, go, go see my family portrait. And then you know what they, they really get mad at? They get mad at you white folk. You guilty by association. What y'all white ass doing around all them damn niggas? No, for real. They done turned y'all out. So what were you before they knew the truth? What were you before you knew the truth? I'll tell you what you was, a mindless minion. Ready to do their will at their beck and their call. That's what you were. You were just an oxygen taker, living and breathing. Thinking you know something, you don't know nothing. I've had a lot of uh, Israelite camps and home fronts and stuff reaching out to different home assemblies and communities. Saying, man, Pastor Dow and Straightway got it right. Now I got women literally volunteering to come down here. Just, they just want a man. They said, we'll... I, don't worry about it. I'll take care of my own self. I just need a man. Y'all remember me reading that on the broadcast? The other Rupert said, here come Isaiah 4 1. Boy, some of y'all in trouble then. You know, the biggest problem with women is they're afraid they're going to get replaced. Hmm? Even feminism is being humbled. <laughs> it ain't working. Got a lot coming up to do. One sister called two children and said, I have no headship. No one to lead me, no one to guide me, no one to feed me, no one to protect me. If y'all just accept me in, I'll do anything I can to be a benefit to the ministry. I still ain't responded. Leave it up to Elder, Elder and all them. You know, a word that says that the children of the kingdom going to be thrusting out of darkness because there's going to be somebody else going to come in have more great honor and respect for it than you do replacement theology men and women nobody's exempt we better stop acting like the Gentiles better stop thinking like the Gentiles We better seriously get about our father's bed. We have a lot of stuff up here we need to divest our minds from. A hell of a lot. Because we're in trouble. We're in some serious trouble. And I hope that if you have a firearm, that, um, that you don't never leave your house without it. And if you're in the house, I hope you got it close by. Remember, I always talk about a three feet rule. I always have a firearm within three feet. I got one within three feet and another within 10 feet. 
Well, more like 20 feet. Got a few things I need to tell y'all. Security team, security team detail too. Uh, when the camera go off, what I want y'all to do too, okay? All right. As you can see, this world is going from bad to worse. And we should be going from wherever state we in to perfection and holiness. Isn't that right? When it's all said and done, we got to get to the kingdom. Now, you know, you think about this. Foolish young man takes off and run, got it on Facebook and stuff, and they tased him. And of course, you know, they're always looking for a gun. If, don't worry, if they didn't find one, they're going to plant one on him. That's probable cause. But you think about this for a second. Neither one of them would never have an opportunity to repent. Life been cut short. Never have an opportunity even to maybe even hear the message. To even come to y'all. And you hear the message and you don't even want it. I know one thing. I bet when you see the king, you're going to want it. Guarantee it. You know how many people have done this? You know, I, since this, what's this, pandemic thing? Pandemic thing? Plandemic? Plague, whatever? I done picked up over 400 patrons. 400. 400 more. You know why? Uh, people can call them crazy they want, but look like they know what's going on. I couldn't imagine any of our people standing in food lines. Did you see those food lines in Texas? Did y'all see them? Couldn't imagine it. Like I said, where are all the preachers at now? Hmm? You know, those shepherds, they're supposed to feed the sheep. Take care of the flock of y'all. Where they at? Y'all got a bunch of mouthpieces that have no revelation whatsoever at all. I guarantee you one thing, they made the people who even if they were hypocrites, this put a defibrillator on their mind and made them a hell of a lot more sober. I'm telling y'all, this is a trial run. They testing to see what the response is going to be. This pales in comparison to what's coming. I can't believe, you won't believe how many people will write to me and say, tell me, and woo-wee, I'm moving now. Say, I would move, I wouldn't move, move, but I'm, this is really done made me move. Hmm? This doesn't change my mind forever. Isn't it beautiful? Sad to have to take this rather than just allowing the word itself to have its perfect work. When the word is going to have it in. See, I know how it goes. See, what we do is, is we cherry pick the word. And we say, no, we don't. Okay, then let me start saying something about the word that you don't like and let's see how the word does. You actually start putting y'all on trial. The word you love is the word that suits you. I can pick any one of y'all. I ride out here, any one of y'all. And say, you really love y'all? Oh, yeah, you love his word? Yeah, okay, good. And I'll start talking to you about the very thing that you are struggling with, having issues and trouble with. My mind ain't ready. It ain't going to never be ready. That's when you find out the man or woman or y'all who you really truly are. And what did it say? It said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Really? 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 You sure? Uh-oh. 
See what I'm saying? You're going to want to be around Israelites. I promise you, you're going to want to be around Israelites. Before this thing all said and done, you're going to want to be around the people. This world's crazy. I wonder how long America's going to keep up its hygiene. You think people are going to go back to being nasty? Two more weeks, two more weeks, and they right back in the same old, just nasty rut again, isn't it? I was talking to one deputy sheriff that came up down there and said, how you doing? Oh, man, we're just making our rounds and stuff. I said, you don't have to worry about us. You got to worry about people that come down here. We don't need your protection. Hmm? I was on a, looking out the camera the other day. I think it was Brother Shane and Teacher Shane and Brother Rich. Brother Rich was taking them to work. And I was sitting at the desk and I looked out at the camera and I seen something run across the front. Y'all say, what the hell is that? Y'all can't make it out. You know, I couldn't make it out because I was far away from the camera. I don't know if it's a damn mountain lion, bobcat, or, or you understand what I mean? I'm like, what the hell is that? Man, I ran to that front door. Somebody beagle dog. I said, man, you just about got lit up. He looked at me and turned and went the other way. You know what I mean? Because you don't ever know what's... There, we had a dog come down here that had all kind of sores and just look... Mange, 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 hat, you know, just, just nasty looking. And you know, children, they see a dog, what they want to do? Hell, our children see a snake, they want to go pet it. That's because Gabriel and them indoctrinated them. Them mutual Omaha La Mile, Wild Kingdom. The modern day Puerto Rican Merlin Perkins. And these children, and they love bringing Mother Carol frogs and snakes and lizards and Brother Brent was telling me the other day, he remember when one day he seen Zephan had a frog. Zephan was walking with the frog, he put the frog on top of his head and then pulled his legs out. <laughs> You remember telling me that? You don't? I remember. Some of them stories you don't forget. <laughs> Who in the world will want frog guts on your head? <laughs> Turtles. They and out here, this is a this is a child paradise out here. This is a perfect environment, especially for boys. Everybody all right? Yes, Glory to the king. I hope y'all really, truly enjoyed my first Sabbath being back together for a little while. All right, let's get on with the word for a second, all right? We do not declare nor talk about the acts of Yah enough in this generation. Are y'all hearing me? You know, Yah has done a lot ever since he's made this thing from the beginning of time all the way up to now. And y'all need to really listen to this. We, we, really, we don't talk about it enough, especially amongst the children. How you think they're going to learn about the fear and reverence of Yah unless you're speaking about it when they're young, from their very youth? They need to know the histories and the stories and the accounts of what Yah has always done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're one of a few assemblies where they can experience 
we know we experience some form of power in Yah. You understand me? But they need to know these great deeds that Yah has done throughout these generations. So look at what he has preserved us from concerning this Corona 19 virus. Well, salvation has shifted over countries, I mean over centuries. Salvation has shifted over centuries. In the 16th century, the reformers was focused on salvation. And what do you think people focus on now? Salvation. They don't want to hear nothing else about the book, but what can I do to be saved? No obedience. No, 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 no guidelines. No rules. I just only want to know how to be saved. And this doctrine is permeated all the way up till right now. That's why you think people don't have any interest in the book. Because of this approach to the book right here. And we have not recovered from that shift. The true message of Yah or the gospel has been altered. Metitiu, Marcus, Lucas, Johanna, and Acts, the first century voices are entirely different from our colonizers. They preached Messiah, Christ more as Christus Victor. It was because of Yahshua's death on the tree. Y'all remember Ron Young, he kept saying, he's conquered, Christ conquered, Christ conquered. And I said, yeah, he conquered, but you ain't. <laughs> we still got a, a walk to go through. So it's all predicated upon and based on what he has done and what he has provided. And that's the only center tension and focus of all these messages is just salvation, not obedience, not keeping the law. Are you following me? Don't obey any prescribed precepts, commandments, statutes, judgments, anything. And that's has created a lawless people. And when you ignore all these things, you get to the point where you don't even think you have to even read the book no more because after all, hey, all we're interested in is salvation. It was because of Yahshua's resurrection from the dead and it was because of Yahshua's ascension that he has won the victory over the strong man, the devil. It was because of this victory, obedience was not at all in their minds and only that he provided salvation. Not only is there forgiveness of sin and recreation, uh, reconciliation to Yah, uh, resulting in eternal life if we continue in the way, but there is also power over sickness, disease, demons, devils, and damnation. Much has been lost over the centuries as we live um, we are rediscovering a lot and restoring somewhat what has been lost. The key to everything is going back to the law. You know, Billy Graham got famous because he would have all these crusades and say all these people got saved. Only one problem, though, they couldn't stay saved. Y'all ain't never did that before in the Christian church? They preach a message about Jesus and your heart start. You start feeling wicked and guilty. You come on up, do your little altar call thing. You do good for about two days. By the end of the week, you're wicked again. Huh? Anybody ever done that before? I thought I was the only one. Can't tell you how many times we did that. This part of the message is not talked about at all. Acts 5, 19, and, the, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch. The healing and miracles are part of the good news of the kingdom. They are an expression of the message if the real gospel is being taught. So we have to focus. Remembering his mighty acts. See, Israel, if you want your faith to increase, you would have to study. You have to study the most high mighty acts. Knowing these are the key to knowing his ways, learning his ways. His ways are higher than ours. And you can't have as much or as little of y'all that you are willing to invest in him. You hear that? Spending time with him is the only way to have your mind transformed and renewed. See, what we want, we want y'all to do everything and do all this because we finally come to a point in our life to where we say a few things where we want something from him, but we don't want to invest anything in him so that we can receive a want or what we need. You know what I mean? If he ain't there when I call on him, no matter how complacent, no matter how much I ignored his voice, no matter how little of time I spent with him, he better answer. That's some of your standard operating procedure. 
And that's just a trick of the Satan using you just to get you to become more bitter, more complacent, more stout-hearted. It is. Psalm 71 from the scriptures, verse 16 says, I've come in the might of the master Yahweh. I make mention of your righteousness, yours alone. Elohim, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wonders. Hear that? And also when I am old and gray, O Elohim, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to a generation, your might to all those who are to come. You hear that? You hear that? See, because the only thing, when you start, you know, you got different stages. You ever heard me talking about different stages of life, right? And see, I'm closer to death than I was at birth. Are you following me? And during these stages, you know I mean, as you get old, the only thing you really truly care about, if you're really truly born again, if you're really truly an Israelite, names are written down, is really truly declaring the mighty acts of Yah, getting as much of his word into the next generation is coming. And those who are here in this generation. Why do you think the world always wants your children? As soon as you have them, they got a school system. They, 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 they're there to school your children. How are they there to school them? So they can function in their society. You get it? When That's what you should be doing. You school them. Because you're going to find out that these thoughts conflict. The ways conflicts, the, tr the traditions, everything conflicts. I mean, you, you look at a religion of Christianity, does it not conflict with the word? But they have massaged this thing so much that it made it seem like it is the word. So you got to teach them. For your righteous, O Elohim, is most high. You who have done great deeds, O Elohim, who is like you. I remember the deeds of Yah, for I remember your wonders of old. And I shall meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Guess what the children will be talking about if you taught them? Instead of talking about Beyonce and Jay-Z and all this other shit they got out there, they could be set up here probably telling each other, reminding each other of the mighty and wonderful acts of Yah and how he's delivering our people. <laughs> Instead of caring about what the world's done, they could go back in the antiquities of old and actually care about what our people have done. No matter how many times you tell people that this life is just a test, that's all it is. When it's all said and done, the end of it is this. What you do now is going to determine if you make it to the kingdom or not. It's not about you getting down there fulfilling all your little dreams and ambitions and goals and ideas. and all. That ain't it. There's no dream greater than the kingdom. None. There is no ambition more powerful than being in the kingdom. I mean, when you start hearing words rehearsed in your ears because you read all the time, I haven't seen. Now, maybe one of them, we don't seen a lot. But I haven't seen. And we know that when we hear this word, we can taste it in our soul how good it is. But then it goes on and say, ear have not heard. And you start thinking, what is this? I haven't seen? Haven't heard? You mean something is greater than what I feel when I talk about y'all? Or when he's mentioned in my mind? Yeah, there's a hell of a lot more to this Ruach than what we're experiencing now. Huh? 
We talk about the kingdom because we can read it right here. But even that, it pales in comparison to what it really truly is. Why do you think Yahshua gladly went there? Huh? He talked about his father's kingdom because he knew about the kingdom. That's why he can make statements. The suffering for the present time is not even worthy to be compared to what's going to be revealed, especially to them that love it. That is laser focus. That's laser focus. And neither has it entered into the heart of man. Then what Yah has prepared for, here it is the key, them that love him. In other words, no matter what sacrifice, being a living sacrifice as we are, there's nothing we can offer to him. There's nothing we can offer to him. That he's not going to give us back a zillion fold. See, these things need to be rehearsed in the children's mind. They need to know that Yah, from their youth, told him, said, you know what, all these things we're doing, it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Good pleasure. They need to know that they've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Y'all hear that? They need to know this. They really truly need to know how mighty not true. Matter of fact, you need to know this. You can't tell the story unless you know it yourself. And I shall meditate on your work and your talk of your deeds. Listen, it's not enough to say I've been around the power of y'all or I've seen many that simply would not invest in y'all with their lives, but they expect much out of it. Psalm 77, 13, your way, O Elohim, is in set apartness. It's in what? It's in what? Who is a great El like Elohim? You know why? Because that is what his way is in. Does that make sense? Brother Shane, get Isaiah 35, verse 8. You are El who does wonders. You have made known your strength. How? Among the people. Among the people. Read. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Y'all hearing that? Now, just in looking at, listening to that in itself, that's pretty straight. Wayfaring men and fools ain't going in? Ooh, that's a highway. You get it? Why do you think I constantly talk about all that he has done. Psalm 71, 15. By your arm you have redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and yourself, Shalai. 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of Yahweh and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded. Our fathers that they should make 
them known to their children. It keeps repeating it, don't it? You hear that? Make it known. It's a commandment to make it known to your children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. That they might sit there hoping Yah and not forget the works of Yah, but to keep his <clears throat> commandment. Listen and learn from this next scripture. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart. Notice, they didn't want to set their heart right. <clears throat> and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yah. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of Yah and refused to walk in his law. And what has this religion has done today? Huh? They've got people in agreeing that you can actually be in opposition to walk in his law, which is his word, which is Yah himself. Isn't that amazing? To forget his works and his wonders that he had showed them. So, do you see how important <clears throat> Yahweh's law is? It's really important because the law of Yahweh is Yah himself. It is his word. He is inseparable from his word. Does that make sense? So when you reject the law, you reject Yah. You get it? So the 16th century so-called believers has all but been agents of Satan. The religion of Christianity is a tool for Satan to deceive the very elect. Listen to this grace Paul spoke about. All right, first guy get to understand it. Gentiles in the Greek, 1484, um, basically by implication, a pagan. Someone, a foreigner, a non-Israelite, a heathen people. All right, remember that. Romans 15, 4. But whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our... So we should learn from the things that already been written, right? Is that right? That we threw... And... Of what? Patience and comfort of the... How you get patience and comfort of the scripture? You see what I mean? The very thing that is done away with. See, I got to talk like this because there's, there's a hell of a lot of new people. A whole lot. Might have hope. So it's the scriptures in itself in comprehending them and understanding them it what gets you to understand and comprehend the hope of Yah. Is that making sense? And they don't even want you to read it. Verse 8 of Romans 15. Now I say that Yahshua was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of Yah to confirm, to confirm the promises made unto Yah. That the Gentiles might glorify Yah for his mercy. As it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto your name. Psalms 89, 49. Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Yahweh, among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. name. Heathen, Goy, Hebrew, Goy, foreigner, nation, the Gentile people. Verse 10. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise Yah, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Elias said, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Isaiah eleven ten, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. So it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Back over to Romans. Now, the hope, now, the hope, now, Yah, of hope, fill you with joy and peace in believing. Now, how you feel with joy and peace? How? In what? See, nobody else can settle you in this. It depends on how much or how little of Yah you want. He has an abundant supply. But you know how some things that you choose to be serious about? 
you've got to think about it. The things that you're serious about, you have to be that much more serious about God. Then you'll understand. Then you'll comprehend. In believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written, uh, written uh, the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of Yah, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of Yah, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that the Gentiles get the Holy Spirit too, right? Now, there's a lot being said right here. There's a hell of a lot being said right here. I am therefore, I am therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain unto Yah. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. You hear that? Through many signs, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of Yah, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Iconium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Now, you cannot get around the fact that signs and wonders follow the true believers in the Messiah. The works testify who we are. It's actually um, a stamp and a seal of approval that Yah is actually dealing with us and working with us. All right? The Christian Gentiles have changed the message over the century. Jesus Christ as victor over sickness, disease, and demons to Jesus, the one who saves from hell and the author of eternal life. Y'all see that switcheroo there? This is what they put emphasis on, and they've done, made light of everything else. Everything else really don't matter. It don't mean this is the only one-way direction that, that we all need. The true translation of Romans 15, 19 is this. Through power, signs, and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of Yah, so that from Jerusalem, that's the true, and the circle of Iconium have completed, fulfilled the good news of victory, of the Messiah. Now listen, real close. What is this? What this is saying is if there's anyone proclaiming, preaching the real message of Messiah, signs and wonders are to accompany the message. The word and the power uh, simply work together. If both of these are not present, then you're not listening to someone. Then you are listening to someone, excuse me, that has their own agenda. Now that right there is putting a dagger in a lot of people. No, no, think about that for a second. Let's go back over again. All right? If both these are not present, it's a bold proclamation now. All right? Then, you're not, then you are listening to someone that has their own agenda. Think about that for a second. Acts 8, teach Five through eight. I need y'all to go back and read that Romans 15 again. Y'all need to meditate on that thing's full. I'll be here at five o'clock just going verse by verse reading it all and explaining it. Acts 8, verse 5, come on. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ whoa, unto whoa, whoa. them. What did he preach? Christ. That's why... That whenever y'all out there choosing to see what other people have to say or something like that, and they're calling themselves free, you've got to look and see what is the direction of the message going to. I mean, it seems notable to get out here and tell people who you are, but it ain't the message. Are you hearing me? It's good for people to know the history, but what a good is to know history when you haven't even started from the very principal thing to preach the Messiah to every creature. You follow me? See, why it looks noble that a lot of people are out here doing so-called preaching and teaching, evangelizing on the streets, doing this. Most people, hey, the churches of Christ, they go all over the earth with missionaries. And you know what they're interested in doing? Making them churches of Christ. 
So Seventh-day Adventists have missionaries all over the place. You know what they're interested in doing? Making them Adventists. Are y'all getting this? See, it seems like that everybody has an a, a interest in the Most High, but they use the Most High to promote their own agenda. That's why he can say, you depart from me, I never knew you. See, when you got an opportunity to minister to someone who y'all laid on your heart, be it your family or whatever, you don't have time to be worried about how they're going to feel. You don't have no time to worry about their emotional state and stuff. I mean, after all, what about them two cats? Wouldn't they would love to have somebody to minister the message to them and then at least give them an opportunity? Well, you don't know if they got the message. Yeah, I do. They never did get the message. You know why? Because when you went to the Christian church, you got the Baptist message. You went to the Catholic church, you got the Catholic message. You got all their forms and all their godliness and Yahshua was on the back burner. Does that make sense? So, when people come this way, they have to even reevaluate what they even been taught before to make sure that they get on the right path. The message is all about Yahshua and his sacrifice. Does that make sense? And that's why we have to, from our little children's youth all the way up, they have to declare because they need to know how the message connects. It'll give them a hell of a lot more respect for the Most High Yah. Read on. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You know how much did. people pay attention when they can hear and see the miracles? You know, um, the people out there in St. Louis and them, Yaki and them, all right, um, he's done divested himself of a lot of curious arts and still cleaning and purging himself. And them brothers are doing, uh, all they know about mass deliverance now, I mean, all they know about deliverance is mass deliverance every time. You follow me? Which could wear the hell out of people. <laughs> You're doing mass deliverance every time. You follow me? So we have to help put them on point because that was, that the message that we were preaching was powerful enough to get them off of just this my people, the other people, the devil, or white man, all this other stuff to get them in line with the right message. And what drew them was is because there was power associated with the ministry. Does that make sense? Now, he loved Brother Chris, don't he, Brother Chris? White man. He said, man, you done taught me a lot. Didn't he, hadn't he said that to you? You have taught me a lot. See that? Changed his whole entire life. Now, tell me that that ain't the message of y'all. Tell me that ain't the power of y'all. Now, wouldn't it have been bad to die that way? Wouldn't it have been bad to die that way? And now look what the devil did with that mother down there whose son got killed on the side of the road by two bubbles. You think she will ever love a white person ever again in her life? Never. Ain't happening. You get it? So Satan knowing what he know full well what he's doing. Most of you out there, you are caught up in these camps and religions and stuff based on pains of the past because of soul ties. You don't really know much about the history. You just know that people administer to your pain. But you've come so-called to Yahshua by that, but you didn't come by the door. Now you know why that the power of y'all is absent from y'all. Because you didn't come in the right way. And they use him, they use him. Just like T.D. Jake says, Jesus is a good selling point. He clearly tells the people out there, you ain't, Jesus is the best marketing tool I ever had. Thieves, robbers. And all this is so subtle because he's included in it. But we're not talking about a people who have been from their youth up been raised into this. So we have to hold a brand new hole for all our people so that the next generation can get the message right for the generations to come. But it's got to come from us. 
Does that make any sense? It's got to come from us. Read on. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lamed, were healed. Y'all get that? I mean, when Michael Israel and them came up here, he couldn't deny this way. Are you following me? A lot of these people, they come straight from his place where they had prejudice against white people, and rightfully so. But you can't sit up and paint a broad brush because all white people wasn't lynching and, and all people wasn't burning slaves. You sit up and make all of them evil and stuff. It's just set up and I can tell you about a bunch of stuff that black folk has done and consider them evil. Huh? As a matter of fact, over in Deuteronomy, he even clearly tells you even more so in the 28th chapter uh, how that uh, your brother's eye will be evil towards you. And there ain't no war like a civil war. <clears throat> Are you following me? So we have literally been moved off center of the message to come in the right way, to hear the message the right way, and to proceed forward. That make sense? This has got to be said because when people start coming around here during the feast days, they don't need to know any damn thing about a damn salt covenant. They don't. They don't need to know who in the hell Alexander Hyssop is. And I make it sense. It's foolishness. It's nonsensical. It don't make sense. You know, there's an old saying, you know, which one would you rather have first, the cart or the horse? Look at that. Everybody went dead. Damn, you want the horse, man. The horse was created. You got to put the cart together. At least with the horse, you got transportation. Damn, I might as well try this one. Which one come first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken did, damn it. Good. But you see what I'm talking about? See, and those people poo-poo stuff like this. And you don't think it's serious. But if they've been able to pull these type of mental gymnastics on our mind, I can only imagine what's still next and what is to come. Are y'all getting this? You got to understand, if you got a religious spirit, Satan is also working in you to try to weigh out the patience of the saints. Your defense parents, if you teach your children from their youth up, there's nobody that will be able to deceive them because the word will be so deeply ingrained in them. In the right way. So if somebody come and preach another gospel or another message, see today if somebody mentions Jesus or just mention Yahshua, you think they're talking about the same message. And I'm going to put emphasis on it again. Why do you think that all these ministries out there, why they're claiming the name of the Lord or claiming the name of Yahshua or Yahawashai, yet they remain powerless. And all we're doing is rediscovering everything that has been lost. What do you think Christianity done? They made sure that you trust in man rather than trusting in Yah. They made sure of it. They got all kind of penances you can do, all type of confessionals you can do, all type of rituals you can do, every bit of it. No power at all. Read on. And there was great joy in that city. Now think about this for a second. We live in a little small city up here, right? Look what Satan got these people's mind. You think that they're interested in the power, y'all? I'm going to ask you an honest question. Could we be a benefit to all these churches up here if they would listen? I'm just showing you how, how much of a lockdown Satan has on their minds through tradition. Hell, we got people in the ministry who grew up in Christianity and their fathers was the preacher, the pastor. A PK kid right there. <laughs> then why in the hell is he sitting here? And not over there with daddy. There's a bunch of people like that. 
A bunch of people like that. The message has been greatly tainted. And you could be part of the problem if you try to teach it, preach it, or give it any other way. And then you're going to stand up in the kingdom as if you were worthy to get in when you preached another message. The whole time. Would that not be bad? That would be seriously bad, wouldn't it? Did you finish? Listen. Listen to Moses because, go to Exodus 33, teach, verse 5. Listen to Moses because I'm looking for the same thing in this latter time. All right, I'm looking for the exact same thing right here in this latter time. Come on with it. Did y'all hear blog talk last night? I should have learned something. Huh? Got your Bible, but ain't got no oil in your lamp. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We could have just showed up for service today and just went to eat after that sermon last night. Yeah, we could have. We got the Sabbath message. Read on. For Yahweh had said unto Moses, Hold saying, on. You know, we got people out there that they want to be a part of ministry, but they, like, they have one hang up. You don't know what it is? We don't have Torah portion. Yeah, that's what I do too. What the hell are you talking about? Brother, the Torah is read here every Sabbath day. Every Sabbath day. You can go and you can go back as far as two decades. And the Torah has always been read here every Sabbath day. But because we ain't doing it the way that the Jews are doing it. Huh? Because we ain't got no. Because we ain't got no head covering on. And because we're not up here copulating with the pulpit. All of a sudden, we ain't having Torah portion, damn it. I just, boy. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? This is the mess that we're in, literally in. <laughs> See, because we're not doing it that way, they don't believe we're having Torah portion. And that's, that, that is their hang-up. We need to dedicate a certain amount of time to just reading the Torah. What do you think we're doing on Sabbath? Amazing, isn't it? See what the rituals have done? I'm not so sure it ain't a religious sickness. Come on, teach. For Yahweh had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore, now put off thine ornaments from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp afar off from the camp and called it the tabernacle of the congregation and it came to pass that everyone which saw Yah went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation which was without the camp and it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and Yah talked with Moses. 
And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. See, that's an account that need to be told to the sons of Israel, the daughters of Israel. Did it say all the people saw? They did saw. They seen, right? Come on. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And Yahweh spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Mm. <laughs> and he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto Yahweh, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carest us, carest us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated? I and the people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Hey, Elder Doug, can you put some sound up here? Because I'm having a difficult time hearing what he's saying. Um, read that verse again. Now, he's looking for grace. Is that right? And favor, mercy, and the glory of Yah. Is that right? Huh? And, and the one thing that he mentioned was he said, I will go with you. You hear that? Read that verse again. Listen to this. For when shall it be known here that I and the people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? And you want to know what grace is? There's an aspect of grace right there by separating you from the people of this earth. That's simple. What more you need? Read on. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Y'all hear that? See, this world will fight us hard to keep us next to them. They won't come up with laws. They'll come up with rules. They'll come up with regulations. Yeah, they will. And then they will have a, a, a system to enforce it. Don't remember, did, did Pharaoh want to let Israel go? What makes you think they want to let you go? It's just a total different it's a totally different generation, but the same thing is still going on. They don't want to let you know. And even, even in this dialogue right here, Yah's will is to separate you from the people of this world. You know the reason why? Because they're part of the fault of the reason why you're constantly enticed, constantly tempted. Oh, hallelujah. But we ask for y'all's ways, but then when he tell us his ways, we don't want them. Oh, yeah. We must separate ourselves from them in order to maintain his kingdom among us. We even got to watch for people who dress like us, talk like us, look like us act like us. Come on, we all can tell these people to come in that hey, this is the way, this is what we usually do. We can tell who's, those whose heart is really not set right with y'all. 
so we endure with long suffering. We're hoping that one day they'll get it. Isn't that right? But if you notice, they never get it. They never get it. Because their agenda is to change us to keep us with one foot in y'all and one foot in the world. That's the agenda. That's the whole agenda. You got to watch. Watch. Watch under prayer. You really truly got to watch. Remember, what is the old adage? There's nothing from without can destroy us, only that which is what? So they always seek to enter in. Huh? And relax y'all's ways. Now, who's going to obey this when y'all keep telling you, I guarantee after this COVID-19, you want to separate? Huh? I bet it doesn't really help you separate in your mind. Even Now, it's amazing that when the world tells you to separate, you ain't got no problem. When the world tells you quarantine, you ain't got no trouble. Preacher, get up here and preach it to you and show you what y'all's words said. All of a sudden, what? You wasn't no cult then, though, was you? The world told you, six feet apart, don't leave your home. Separate. It's the law. <laughs> it's the what? It's the law. I ah, never mind. See, you know I'm right. You know I'm right. Y'all says it. Hmm. You damn hypocrites. It's <laughs> sad, isn't it? <laughs> All right, teach Leviticus 24. I mean, 20 verses 24 and 26. Can you see the rest of them? Ain't we some hypocrites? Ain't we some bona fide hypocrites? Huh? Old Pharaoh said, I want want y'all to separate. And we'll let you know you can come back out. (laughs) Okay. And this is our law. Oh, we got to obey the law. Yeah. Was, but you, you don't, the hell with y'all's law though, right? When he say separate, no, we, now hold on. Mm. Read. But I have said unto you. <laughs> you know it's true. Ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it. A land that floweth with milk and honey. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, which has separated you from other people. He, he did what? Separated you. Didn't he say that in that dialogue to Moses? He's saying it again too, isn't he? It's crazy, isn't it? What strange doctrine is this? Separate. Separate. And the main reason why, because he don't want them heathens to have no influence on you and the children. None. Envy not their ways. Why do you think the world, as soon as we start talking about communities, common unity, first thing that comes to their mind, cult. But it wasn't no cult when we had to separate here for two months, though, wasn't it? See, we let these people toy around with our minds. We let them tell us whatever the hell, and then like good little Americans, off and marching we go. Why do you think they always want to attack me and silence my voice? Anybody that is going to be any type of liberator or, or to free somebody from all these damn tyrannical laws and rules and regulations, especially to get you to think, to get you to start thinking, that's worse than the devil to them. When they got you right where they want. Read on. You shall therefore put difference between clean beast and unclean. Do they do that out there? But y'all want you to do it, right? Now, now wait a minute. 
He, don't, he won't alter or change anything that's going out of his lips, right? All of a sudden, he's done changed this, though. The perfect creator of the universe has done changed his mind now. He come up with Christianity. Now, all of a sudden, they are his people. And now you can eat pig. But he just said, you're going to put a difference between the clean and the unclean. You, you, we are the world. We are the children. We just want to make a better place, so let's start living. <laughs> While you up here coexisting with the Satanists. Who's your friend? Coexisting over here with the Mason. We don't judge each other. He, he's a good person. Ain't no damn body good. Right. And a woman said to me earlier this week, well, you know, just, you know, a woman is just as good as any man. I said, you got me wrong. Uh -huh. If a woman just as good as any man, she ain't no damn good. Because right. ain't no man no good. And you women already know y'all ain't no damn good. Now, you ain't throwing, throwing around playing with me. I'm just honest. But well, what about you? I already told you. See, what happens is, is when we start hitting you, you get offended. I can sit up here and tell you that a man ain't no damn good, but when I get to you, all of a sudden you forgot what I said. All he do is talk about women. Did I not start with a man? <laughs> Come on. And between unclean fowls and clean, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast, or by fowl, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. Y'all hear that? People go to Louisiana just to go gator hunting. Catfish noodling. Y'all know what catfish noodling is? Who don't know what catfish noodling is? Are you sick? Good God of mercy. They got this one girl that, that goes catfish noodling. She a, she a hot looking little thing too. And you know what she does? She gets this long big old stick with a hook on the end. If he's way back off in the hole, she reaches back up there and then pulls him out 15 feet in the hole. And then she sticks her hand up in the catfish mouth and wrestles it out of the river and brings it back over to the boat on the bank. See, sometimes catfish are in holes on the side of the bank. Can you imagine? Brother, I don't know if there's no catfish in that damn hole. <laughs> it could be a gator in that hole. Right. But you're going to stick your hand in a hole you can't see. See, and the reason why y'all want to separate you from that because you may get an idea, I want to do that. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, I want to go noodling. That's why I got to separate you. go to Louisiana and, and, and you hungry and you, it's time for you to go to a rest stop you go in a restaurant, you look over at them Gentiles and you see a crab, a shrimp what they call them layouts when you put a shrimp plate, shrimp platter a seafood platter in front of you and then all of a sudden you know, mind you, you just been born again only 15 years and then all of a sudden that thought comes up in your mind and you over here with your cheeseburger. <laughs> and you watching them dip that shrimp in that hot butter. <laughs> y'all know I'm telling the truth. And y'all separated from you, from the heathen. Now all of a sudden you got second thoughts. And y'all ain't even in it. <laughs> 
You know, see, it's a detestable thing right now, but not at that moment, it ain't it. Your mouth is watering, you'll be salivating. I had one guy years ago told me, come to me and pastor. Yeah, yeah, what, what you got? Man, I got to repent. I said, what you doing in front of me? Did you hurt me? Did you harm me? Did you offend me? Well, no, I, I know you just feel better if you tell me, right? I really don't want to know. If it's something between you and y'all, go get it right. I said, bro, I got enough on my plate or my platter. <laughs> you know what he had to tell me? I, I was sitting down in the restaurant and, and um, that pork chop was looking good. <laughs> I, I, I ate a pork chop pastor. And he actually lived on the community. I said, really? I said, you know what Isaiah said about that? I said, if you don't, go read it. See, that is a sin against Yah. That ain't a sin you and I. That's a sin against Yah. See, now you feel worse than that you have been in front of me. Because <laughs> I don't remind you what y'all said. Why'd you come up here? Brother, if you ain't sinning against me, stay away from me. Go get it right with y'all. Hallelujah. See what I mean? And don't sit up here and think I'm going to ask you how to taste either. Because I ain't never like pork chops. That is me. Read on. And ye shall be holy unto me. See, that's the reason why we be holy. Only when we are separated. When we are set apart. That's when we are holy unto him. Man, I got to see if I can find that video. Y'all think I'm kidding, don't you? This little country girl, man, she puts on a bikini and gets in a river. First of all, I ain't getting in no damn river. I, don't really, I done been in enough rivers. I'd have had enough of these big black ass water moskins in front of my damn face. I'm tired of the field. There's a lot of stuff out there running around in them woods. <laughs> Believe you me, there's a lot out there in them woods. You in their domain. See, the most I want to separate. Then watch the next pandemic that comes down, the big one, that's going to probably take out a quarter of this earth. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you want to practice social distancing in. I guarantee you want to be separated in. But why wait for something like that to come? Why not just be obedient and start making moves? Why wait? Huh? Read on. What you got? You in Deuteronomy? For I, Yahweh, am holy and have severed you from other people. Notice, severed. That's like. Come on. That ye should be mine. The whole purpose he want to separate it from the people of this land because we're his. He don't want to share us with the people of this world. Is there something wrong with that? He is a jealous Elohim. Huh? He's a jealous husband. You wife ain't got no right to be jealous. That's a spirit. Oh, hallelujah. See, see, all of a sudden that blank. You know, first there's an image, but then as soon as I say that, see the paper. Face like see the paper. Read on. We're in Deuteronomy now. Go ahead, 7 6. Listen. For thou art an holy people. Again, he keeps telling us what kind of people are we. Holy. That's the type of people we are. Read on. Unto Yahweh, thy Elohim. 
Read on. Yahweh thy Elohim hath chosen thee. He has did what? He's chosen thee. You ain't sitting here because you want to be here. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. The only reason why you're here is because the first thing that you didn't want is to go to hell. Because Christianity terrified the shit out of you of a lake of fire. Love should have got you here. Very good. You may experience some of well, I, I do. I was kind of scared, but you know, after I see the Holy Spirit, I understand love. That's good. But go back five, ten years ago or before you were converted, or go back a year before you converted and see what you was doing, see if you had any interest in Yah. That's because him, the creator of the universe. You were, all of us was in our sickness. Then all of a sudden, he sent his spirit. And the Holy Spirit started ministering. All of a sudden, you man, what's going on? Then all of a sudden, you got converted. And then the first thing you want to do is go tell everybody what happened to you. How many made that mistake? Come to find out everybody ain't got this joy like you got. This joy that I have, well, didn't give it to me. Whoa, this joy that I have, well, didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, well, didn't give it to me. Well, can't give it and the world can't take it away. I get joy when I think about <laughs> And then you go volunteer for depression by telling somebody going to steal your joy. Think about this. Look what this COVID-19 taught us. You think we got the reality of behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity? 1st we was getting all lax and everything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Being around each other all the time. Now, I said, isn't that something? I said, Elder Doug, tell us things that are going to come. There ain't no alternative weekends this weekend, though, is it? Everybody here. <laughs> Everybody here. Hey, is this a uh, Clarksville week? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Read, teach. Yahweh thy Elohim had chosen thee. To be what? To be a special people. See, what name? Because you were riding a short bus either in school. <laughs> <laughs> You're special people. Unto him. Come on. To be a special people unto himself. Unto himself. You hear that? Jealous Yah. Jealous Elohim. Come on. Above all people. Below the people. All. Now this world ain't going to look at you as if you are above them. But do you know, believe it or not, that these Masons and a lot of other people out here know that you are the people of Yah? You know that? And they know that as long as they keep you down, they keeps them up in the grand scheme of things in this earth. They ain't gonna, them and the Eastern stars ain't going to tell you this, but that's, they know this knowledge. Pass down how you know, because I talked to some of them. They ain't supposed to tell nobody. Well, whoever, whoever, when you tell somebody, shut up, do they shut up? <laughs> I've talked to high-level masons and eastern stars. Tell you exactly the secret. They ain't supposed to do it because, yeah, I know they made those. They don't believe them. They don't believe that their bowels getting ready to be gushed out and thrown off into the sea. They don't believe that. If they did, they wouldn't have told me. <laughs> Besides that, when you come to Jesus, all bets are off. I'm serious. Read on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's the way Yah sees you. So since he already done orchestrated and made that move for you to be here, then why can't you just repay him with your love and obedience back? Yeah. Don't that make sense? 
Why can't you just do that? Boy, ungrateful, huh? Unthankful. Come on. Deuteronomy 14. For thou art an holy people. By the way, are we having Torah portion? <laughs> just checking. Come on. For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy Elohim. And Yahweh had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Y'all hear that? Come on. Above all the nations that are upon See, the problem the is, is you think too little of yourself. If y'all thought this about you, then won't you just start running around like kings and princes and queens and start acting like it? Come on. Chapter 26. And Yahweh hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments. Now, wait a minute. That's what he, Moses said, right? Moses being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. Is that what he said? And you got this large religion to tell you, don't keep the commandments. They done away with and all that. Yeah, am I making sense? I keep bringing this up because there's a lot of new people listening. Believe you me, there's a lot of new people listening. That's like, whatever COVID-19 did, come on back again. When COVID-20 coming up then. Because, man, it sure was enough to scare the hell out of people to get them to come to Jesus. Whatever it was. Come on. And to make thee high above all nations which he hath made. That's pretty high, isn't it? In praise and in name and in honor mm. that thou mayest be a holy people unto Yahweh thy Elohim as he has spoken. Is it okay if y'all use us any way you want? See, the highest calling is saint. That's a high representation. Y'all hearing that? That's some serious business. And what he said yesterday, he mean it today. Read 2 Corinthians. We're almost done. Y'all be okay. We can say it at 8 o'clock and y'all still be happy. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. Come on. Be not unequally yoked together. I still want y'all to read Romans 15, though. Y'all really need to read that. Y'all really, truly need to read that. Come on. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Now, wait a minute. Where did Paul get all this from? Where did he get all this from? He must have got it from the Torah there, didn't he? I, shucks. Come on. And what agreement hath the temple of Yah with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. As Yah said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their Elohim. Now, wait a minute. Did he not fulfill it, though? He would dwell in us? Yes. See, don't we have the Holy Spirit in us? Yes. Did he not fulfill that promise? Yes. He's dwelling in us. Hallelujah. He's walking in us, all right? Yes. Read on. I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Stay in. Come out. Be their neighbor. Come out. Fellowship. Come out. From among them. And be ye separate. Let me ask you, is this a suggestion or a command? Amen. Come on. Saith Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Notice, who going to preach this out there? He basically said, if you don't do this, he's not going to be a father. 
You ain't going to be no son or daughter. That's heavy hitting. But, 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 y'all, we live in a new modern generation. We got PlayStation and Xbox. We got Samsung and Apple. We got technology. Ariel, what the hell was that thing you were doing? Ariel, he, I went in the house the other day and Ariel was, was doing this. I, 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 said, I said, what's wrong with him? What the hell? He, he got some type of, it's, it's, no, it's this damn big ass black book on the front of his eyes. Huh? What is that thing? He said, you want to try this? Say, hell no. I'm going to sell down. Make me do that. Hell no, I don't want that damn thing on my eye. Didn't I say that? Then I said, oh, hell, they got you acting like that? Uh-uh. See, that's, that's why it was easy for me to not do drugs, because I would look and see the way it make you do that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. I don't know if I may just one day just start. <laughs> No telling what else might happen. Put that damn thing on my eyes. <laughs> Y'all to see the way he do. It, Gabriel, how does he look when he's doing that? Come here, Gabriel. Let me see. D -d -d Come here and demonstrate that. You think I'm kidding? You notice I always like verifying stuff. Because people think I'll be stretching, adding jelly, adding imagination. Yeah, they do. Come right here. Show, show what he does. And you want me to put that on my head? <laughs> Thank you, son. You want me to put it on my... <laughs> what, was you fighting somebody? You, you fighting somebody and you fighting like that? <laughs> you fight like that. <laughs> you fight like that. You shoot. You threw everything out the window. <laughs> Got read, teach. Saith Yahweh Almighty. Mercy. Israel, if we're going to advance in his kingdom and amount to anything, there is no way around knowing his ways. No way. First John 5 14. Are y'all cold in here? It's a little nippy. We fine. Go ahead and read, teach what you have. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. Now watch this. See, this is when you get it. If you ask these things according to his will, but look at the position you got to be in. Look at all the stuff you got to do. Come on. He heareth us. Now, just because he heareth, that don't mean you're going to get it. You know how many times my children came to me and asked stuff and I heard them? I heard them. They go to, go to Carol, Mama, did Daddy hear us? Oh, yeah, he heard you. Well, what's the problem? You ain't getting it. <laughs> ain't that about right? <laughs> ain't that true? Heard just fine. Read on. You finished? All right. So you cannot call labor with y'all in this work if you do not spend time learning his ways. Hey, you've got one life to live. This is a trial run. This is. This trial run should have taught us all that we are on the right path and listening to the right preacher, Yah is ordained. Should have taught us that. Now, 
the, the word teaches that when a preacher preach, he's supposed to preach the word. He's supposed to do what? Preach the word. Not use the word to forward your agenda. See, see how fine of a line it is? It's a fine line. What T.D. Jakes is doing is using the word to forward his agenda. He wrote a book, Woman Thou Art Loose. New York Times bestseller. If I write a book and tell the truth, woman, you are bound, you think it's going to sell? <laughs> and I just told the truth. <laughs> huh? And I told the truth. <laughs> Y'all see this hairline, right? Charlos, what kind of cars a man ain't got? <laughs> He's got? I know he practices. John 17, verse 14. I have given him thy word, and the world loved them. You hear that? It didn't say that, did it? When y'all give us his word, the world will hate you. That should be a hallmark sign of those who of y'all are not. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the what? From evil. And they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. See, we've been in the world, but see, now we've been sent because of the born-again conversion. You get it? Sent to represent his kingdom as an ambassador. All for their sakes, I sanctify myself. All for their sakes, he sanctify himself, that they also may be sanctified through <coughs> the truth. Meaning set apart through the truth, right? Neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their, what? Word. Word. See, when Moses, I sent you here, he didn't draw you to Pastor Dow. He drew you because of the word. He's the one that's doing the drawing. All of us got roles to do. You get it? He is. Y'all got it? So understand this fine line and this deception stuff and make sure you're not a tool of the enemy to distress and move people out of the way. Stay focused. You know, Acts 19 always works. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? How were you immersed? That, that always works because it's the word. Hmm? Y'all get that? I had a guy the other day. He wanted to talk to me about the lunar Sabbath. I said, brother, I done been over that, man. Brother, how long you been in that? He told me, I said, brother, I've been, man, I've been in that long as you are old. As long as you've been living in this world. I told you, man, it don't make no difference, does it? Well, I mean, you know, you know how it is. Your eyes ain't open, you know, you're blinded and all this other stuff. I said, brother, if I'm blinded in this, man, I don't never see it coming open then. Because it just don't make no logical sense. It don't even make sense to me in any way. And I'm literally a student of the word. Lunar Sabbath. Everybody all right? Let us stand. Most of y'all, we thank you for these sayings. Pray they sink deep down our heart. The magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. King coming.